Today I'll teach you about the game of Duel and Back. So what is Duel and Back? Duel and Back was a game created in 2003 by University of Michigan professor Susan S. Jake. It was designed to improve fluid intelligence, which we will talk about later, also indicated by the two letters G and F and is the most cited game in cognitive training research papers. So key terms to note. 1. Working memory. Working memory is the ability to solve novel problems. 2. Fluid intelligence. Very closely correlated working memory, it is a type of intelligence that allows for this ability. 3. Crystallized Intelligence The counterpart of fluid intelligence, this deals with factual knowledge, the stuff you use on quiz shows, like Jeopardy. And 4. N N stands for the number of moves a player must remember back in the game. This will be explained later. On to the game itself. Duel and Back, as noted before, was a game created to improve fluid intelligence and working memory. The game is made up of a 3x3 three three square with the center square missing. One square will light up and give a sound at the same time. The player, with respect to N, must note if the sound has been repeated or the position has been repeated. Let me give you an example after I finish up the square. So let's start off with something easy. We will set an n equal to 1. This means the player must remember the sound and position of one move back. So the first sound and position is A in the lower left corner. The second is A but in a different square. Now this can either be a visual signal, which it is not because they're in two different squares, or it can be an audio signal, which it is because the two letters are repeated. Now let's look at another situation. Once again, the lower left square lights up. It gives us an A and then a B. The visual signal is now met, as the same position has been repeated twice. But now the audio signal has not been met, because you have two distinct letters. One more situation. Let's say the first move gives us an A in the lower left corner, and so does the second move. Now both the visual and audio signal have been met. Now this may seem easy, but as N increases, the game gets progressively harder. Let me show you in a little bit. So let's take the example when N is equal to 2. So first we have an audio signal of A in that position, then a B, and then an A. This is the audio signal as two moves ago we had already heard an A. Let's take it one step further. Next there is a B, again an audio signal because B was heard two moves ago. Let's say there's another added C. Now one must look two moves back and see that the A and the C were in the same position. Despite appearing to be quite simple, the game Duel and Back is in fact very complex. Here are a couple things to remember before you start playing. 1. Do not make a strategy. This will be counterintuitive, as you want to build up your fluid intelligence. You don't want to cheat the system. 2. Play for 15 to 25 minutes a day, or approximately 10 to 20 games. 3. Pay attention to N. The number will change through the game, and it is important to keep track of its value. And 4. Consistent training. You can't get better unless you practice. So the final word. The scientific community has not fully accepted Diggy's research, nor has it put out a definitive conclusion about it. However, Diggy did conduct multiple trials and her evidence is very strong. I was a skeptic myself until I tried it, so I implore you to do the same. Go to my website, click under personal training, and try it yourself.
Thank you for watching my video. Go ahead and play.